Hello, everyone, and welcome to this short series of Critical Realism Basics, in which we give a brief account of the main concepts uh, used in critical realism and what they mean. My name is Daniela. I'm a PhD researcher at the University of Reading, as well as a member of the CSJ network. And in this video, I will talk about what critical realism is and how it defines uh, the boundaries of scientific discovery. In essence, critical realism is a research philosophy credited to uh, Roy Baskar and a few other British scholars, a research philosophy which assumes a layered nature of reality. And these layers, also described as the domains of reality, are the empirical consisting of experiences, observations, um, interpretations of events, which we can capture through our senses, the actual, um, which consists of events, events which we may or may not perceive, and the real, um, where structures, causal mechanisms, and dispositional powers exist, all of which can generate the events in the actual and the experiences in the empirical domain, respectively. When we speak of structures, um, causal mechanisms, and dispositional powers, um, we include both material or physical things, such as the human body or the human brain, which enables us to directly experience the world around us, but also more abstract things, such as principles or values, um, which can be individual or shared by groups of people. And they are causal in as much as they are able to influence our lived reality. For example, making us behave in certain ways and not others. Although in natural sciences, um, it is generally possible to make causal inferences that are fairly straightforward, um, measure precisely what causes um, an event or how much of something causes an event or even replicate these conditions in lab, in the social sciences, it becomes a bit more complicated, um, and hence we need a different um, system of thinking to explain social phenomena. Um, and this is for a variety of reasons, um, but broadly speaking, this has to do with complexity, um, for one, in that a collection of experiences or events can be the result of multiple structures or mechanisms at play. Um, and as they interact, uh, they may produce new or unique features which are not shared by individual causal elements. So in this sense, critical realists um, talk about laminated systems or multiplicities of structures, which cannot be isolated um, like variables in an experimental setting can be. Um, secondly, um, there is no complete determinism or complete non-determinism for that matter, meaning that um, individuals uh, in a social context um, are not fully constrained by uh, structures or mechanisms, nor they are free to act as they please. Um, so in this sense, uh, critical realists talk about emergence meaning that individuals can become causal agents themselves um, by consistently engaging um, with pre-existing structures. And as they do, they may reproduce them, but also transform um, and change them over time. And lastly, randomness and unpredictability. Um, this implies that not all of the mechanisms that may be relevant for a certain event or experience to occur um, are always activated or activated at the same time. Um, so in order to explain these mechanisms, um, critical realists work with the assumption of open systems and they try to identify demi-regularities, which are frequently reproduced patterns of social occurrences. And this is usually the start of the scientific inquiry in critical realism, to which we'll return later. For now, I will leave you with um, a list of uh, basic readings and I hope you enjoy them. Mm -hmm. 